My name is Georgia Beasley, and today we're going to be discussing melanoma. The learning objectives today are to identify the important epidemiologic factors and risk factors for melanoma, to understand the clinical and pathological diagnoses of melanoma, and learn the generalized treatment approach to melanoma. We will discuss the definition of melanoma, the epidemiology, risk factors, the clinical diagnoses, pathologic diagnoses and stagings, and the possible treatment options, as well as a little bit of prognostic information. Melanoma is a malignant tumor of the melanocytes. Melanocytes are cells that produce melanin, found most commonly in the skin, but they're also found in the bowel, inner ear, bone, meninges, and the eye. Melanocytes are of neural crust origin. Melanocytes comprise of 5 to 10 percent of cells in the stratum basal layer of the epidermis. While cutaneous melanoma is the most common, melanoma can develop wherever uh, melanocytes are present, including uveal melanoma and anal melanoma, and it's important to keep this in mind when evaluating patients. The American Cancer Society estimates that in 2012, 76,250 new melanoma cases will be diagnosed and that there will be about 9,180 expected deaths. The incidence rates for melanoma have been rising for the last 30 years, and melanoma is considered to be increasing in incidence faster than other types of any other malignancies. The World Health Organization estimates that there are 48,000 melanoma-related deaths worldwide per year. The risk factors for melanoma are prolonged sun exposure or UV radiation, having fair skin, light hair, or light eye color, having multiple dysplastic nevi, a personal or family history of melanoma, and multiple genetic mutations have been identified, including the ones listed here and many, many more. Sun exposure is potentially a modifiable uh, risk factor, while the others are generally not uh, modifiable. There are generally five types of melanoma. Superficial spreading is the most common. Nodular is an aggressive type that has a vertical growth phase early in oncogenesis, and as a result, these lesions are often thicker. Lentigo maligna is a flat, less aggressive type. Acrolentigenous melanoma is frequently found on the palms or soles of darker-skinned people, and desmoplastic is a rare but aggressive form. This slide lists in table form these types of melanoma along with their frequencies and the, the characteristic features. The ABCDEs can help in clinical suspicion of melanoma, although there is really no reliable clinical method, and melanoma remains a pathologic diagnosis. A equals asymmetry, B equals irregular borders, C is for color or change in color, D is for changing or growing diameter, and E is for evolution or noted changes in the lesion. These can help instruct patients about also self-exams of their skin. Usually a skin biopsy is performed for any suspicious lesion. Biopsies are usually performed with a punch biopsy, although recently evidence exists that shave biopsies may also be appropriate. However, historically, punch biopsies have been used if you are suspicious of melanoma. If the diagnosis is melanoma, the historical features are the Breslow depth and Clark level of melanoma. Breslow depth is a measure in millimeters of the tumor thickness in the skin, while Clark level is a measure of the anatomic level of invasion. This diagram demonstrates the differences, showing the depth on the left-hand side measured in Breslow thickness, and on the right, the Clark levels, which show the anatomic location. For example, Clark level 1 is a melanoma in the intraepidermal component only. The two systems are in place due to the fact that the skin is of varying thicknesses on different parts of the body. Currently, in addition to Breslow depth and Clark level, several other features will be mentioned in the pathologic report and are, and are important in prognosis such as ulceration and the number of mitotic figures. And the most recent addition of the AGCC staging, ulceration and mitotic figures, as well as depth, are the important uh, criteria for T-staging. The 2009 version of the American Joint Committee on Cancer Staging and Melanoma uses the T, N, and M approach. The system is very detailed, and each T, N, and M has several sublevels. In general, stage 1 or 2 cutaneous melanoma is confined to the region where the melanoma was identified with no evidence of spread. Stage 3 indicates some degree of nodal involvement or a pattern of local regional recurrence. 
and stage 4 indicates distant metastatic disease. For lesions less than 4 millimeters in thickness, that's Breslow thickness, surgery with wide local excisions is recommended. This table lists the generally acceptable surgical margins depending on the tumor thickness. In some cases, sentinel lymph node biopsies, which identify the lymph node that is draining the tumor, are recommended. Thick tumors and other worrisome features may also prompt sentinel lymph node biopsy. For tumors greater than 4 mm in thickness, whole body imaging with PET CT scans is often performed to evaluate for any metastatic disease. In the event of tumor noted in the sentinel lymph node, palpable lymphadenopathy, or radiographic disease in the lymph nodes, complete lymph node dissection has historically been recommended. For patients with metastatic disease, including lymph node disease, systemic therapies are often recommended and include interleukin-2, interferon, and newer drugs such as ipilipimab and vemurafenib. The latter two drugs have only recently received FDA approval. Ipilipimab has anti-CTLA-4 activity, and bemurafenib is a BRAF inhibitor that works only in melanomas with the BRAF mutation. Only 50% of melanomas harbor the BRAF mutation. Metastatic melanoma generally has a poor prognosis, while early-stage melanoma has 90 to 95% 5 and 10-year survival rates. Therefore, patients with a metastatic melanoma or stage 4 disease generally have a poor prognosis, while those with early-stage disease, such as stage 1 or stage 2, have a very good prognosis. This slide uh, lists uh, key references, including the reference for the staging. And this slide lists acknowledgments, Dr. Tyler, Dr. Siegler, and Dr. Pruitt, melanoma surgeons at Duke University.